An old lineage of wolf is found in the high altitude ecosystems of the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau. The Himalayan wolf has been roaming the vast landscapes of Central Asia for more than 800,000 years. Genetically, this wolf lineage is distinct from the gray wolf found across Europe and North America. It is an elusive wolf that is perfectly adapted to its barren habitat. Its coat helps it to resist the cold temperatures. It is of whitish-brown color, which helps it to blend in with the landscape. But also, black wolves can be found. These wolves share their habitat with a specialized high-altitude wildlife community. The social life of Himalayan wolves is characterized by life in small packs, which often consist of a family group. Wolf packs found in Nepal consisted of five wolves on average, including two adults and three pups. The wolves communicate by howling, by scent marking with urine and feces, and by body language. Here, the female greets the male who just returned from a hunt. Himalayan wolf pups in Nepal are born in the spring months of April and May. They spend the first weeks of their life in an inconspicuous den. This den is usually a cave, such as an expanded marmot burrow or a rock crevice. The den provides essential protection to the pups during the early stage of their life. Expanding from their den site, the wolf pups keep exploring the world around them. At times they meet other species, such as this young Himalayan marmot. At this particular instance, the wolf pups and the young marmot just look at each other. For now, they remain innocent to the ecological interaction they will have when grown up. In the beginning of their life, the wolf pups depend on their mother's milk. Soon, meat provided by their parents becomes important. At times, surplus meat is hidden by wolves for a later meal. Here, the mother buries the leftover meat while the wolf pups are asleep. Himalayan wolf packs roam extensive areas in search for food. Like many canids, Himalayan wolves flexibly adapt their diet to the wild prey species around them. They hunt mammals of all sizes, the Kiang is a wild relative of the horse. Female Kiang aggregate in loose herds, while males tend to be more solitary and defend a territory. A healthy adult Kiang will not be preyed upon by wolves as it can fiercely defend itself. Only sick and weak Kiangs are at risk to be hunted. The blue sheep living in herds is an important prey species for Himalayan wolves and snow leopards. The Argali is the largest wild sheep in the world and also hunted by humans for its trophy. Tibetan gazelles live in groups of 3 to 20 gazelles in the Himalayas of Nepal. They are found only in small numbers. Various small mammals are a welcome supplement to the diet of wolves, snow leopards, and foxes. The woolly hare is primarily active in the nighttime, but can sometimes be observed in the daytime as well. The plateau pika plays an exceptional ecological role in high altitudes by recycling soil nutrients and providing microhabitats to plants and birds within its burrow. A Himalayan wolf pack inhabits large territories comprising hundreds of square kilometers Healthy prey populations within these territories are crucial to the wolves' survival. The Himalayan wolves share their high-altitude habitat with other predators, such as the snow leopard, the red fox, and the Tibetan fox. But the most competing predator is man. The Himalayan wolf population, although currently little understood, appears to be decreasing. Wolves get persecuted by humans in retaliation for livestock depredation, which is a main driver of human-wolf conflict. 
Domestic livestock numbers are locally often higher than those of natural wild prey, and unguarded livestock makes easy prey for wolves. The grazing cows, yaks, goats, and sheep sustain on vegetation in direct competition to native wild prey. As a result, these wild prey populations decrease. Wolves then depredate on livestock and get into conflict with humans. Humans kill wolves with firearms by smoking the pups to death in the den or by setting large pit traps. The high-altitude shrublands preferred for denning by Himalayan wolves are often also favored pasture lands of the local shepherds. As a consequence, human-wolf conflict is often intense in these den areas, as a wolf pack with young offspring is least mobile and has a high demand for food. Recent research indicates that killing wolves with the aim to decrease livestock depredation is often not effective or even has a worsening effect as killing wolves disrupts the pack structure and thereby also often affects territory occupation. However, a positive coexistence of humans and wolves is possible. The keys are education and leadership. Tolerance towards wolves and other predators is raised by increasing knowledge about the significance of wildlife and training the local community to take responsibility for its conservation. Wolves and coexisting wildlife need intact habitats and appropriate management of pasture lands for livestock that allows spatial and temporal relief for wild prey is vital. Predator-proofing night corrals with high and solid fences has proven effective in keeping livestock protected from predators during the night. Community-based insurance schemes for livestock depredation can bring financial relief to herders that suffer animal losses. The success with guarding dogs can be improved by training the dogs specifically for the task. Fortunately, the culture and religion of the local Buddhist communities provide fertile ground for the protection of wildlife. The Himalayan wolf lives in remote places, in three such places in the Himalayas of Nepal at elevations from 4,200 to 5,600 meters above sea level, the field research for this study has been conducted. The team went out to study the Himalayan wolf and its role in the ecosystem over the spring and summer seasons of three consecutive years. Camp life without access to modern commodities has its own beauties and challenges. The team walked for more than 2,400 kilometers through the mountains in search of wolves. For the success of such expeditions, a reliable team, preparation, endurance, and solid equipment are crucial. The collected wolf feces were designated for genetic analysis. The team was also interested in the abundance of the different prey species, as this data helps to understand the relative availability of wild versus domestic prey for wolves. Discussions with local communities brought insights into the human perspective of living with wolves, with the aim to find the best solutions for humans and wildlife to coexist. The Himalayan Wolves Project contributes to the scientific database for the conservation of the wolf and coexisting wildlife in their unique high-altitude habitats.